Hey there, fellow nerds and geeks. Aaron Naboos here, and on this episode of The Hall 8 Show, my co-host, Alex Benedicto, and I interview Ruben Torres, somebody that I grew up with in South San Diego, California. Shout out to my Southside homies. He's touching lives and making a difference in San Diego, Los Angeles, Northern California, and Tijuana, Mexico, with his Love Thy Neighbor movement and with events like his upcoming Barn Burner Heart of Boxing Art Show. The event takes place on Saturday, September 30th, 2017, at one of the local San Diego boxing gyms, House of Boxing, with some of the proceeds going toward his annual Love Thy Neighbor toy drive in December. I loved this podcast episode not only because it was with one of my childhood friends, but more importantly, because of what he is doing to empower people to support local businesses, artists, and people in need. One such example of how he's making a difference is his recent organization of donated brand new art supplies that were given to a few prisoners at Soledad State Prison. Some of the prison artwork will actually be showcased at Heart of Boxing. I've been to his past art shows, such as the Heart of Loteria and the Heart of Lucha, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Heart of Boxing has in store. For ticket information, please check out House of Boxing. SD.com. In addition to this podcast with Ruben, go check out the Hall H Show blog post for this episode, episode 25 at hallh.com, to see a short video of Ruben showing us around his newly opened headquarters for Love Thy Neighbor. Thanks again for tuning in and enjoy. Hey there, fellow nerds and geeks. Aaron Naboos here, and welcome to the Hall H Show. Uh, joined by my co-host, Alex Benedicto. Hey there. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that know us, we are from uh, San Diego, home of San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, more specifically for me, anyway, I grew up in South San Diego. And um, South San Diego is known for uh, you know, legendary hip-hop pioneers, uh, LOD, Legion of Doom. Yeah. Um, I think we got the best carne asada burritos in California. Yes. <laughs> um, Ray Mysterio, for you uh, wrestling heads, I went to uh, Montgomery High School. Montgomery. And uh, can't forget uh, the world-renowned P.O.D. I think they're on tour right now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think you're going to add our next guest to the list. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. He does a lot for the community. <laughs> he does a lot for the community and for the uh, burgeoning art movement. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Ruben Torres. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We, we forgot Frankie J too. Frankie J went to yeah, uh, yeah Frankie J yeah he went to Southwest local South San Diego uh, multi platinum Grammy award winning artist cool um, and the reason why we're having you on the show is because you have a uh, an event coming up uh, next weekend yeah Heart of Boxing Heart of Boxing uh, but before we get to that um, uh, kind of get let our audience know a little bit about, uh, about you you know growing up what was uh, 11-year-old Ruben, like, what, what were, you, what were <laughs> yeah. you into back then? Dude, 11-year-old Ruben, I think, uh, I, I don't want to say too much because my son's sitting here and he's going to be like, Daddy, you did all that? You know, but, uh, well, you remember, man. I mean, you know, I've known you since, what, probably junior high, high school. Well, I think we both uh, went to uh, Finney. Finney, yeah, yeah, Finney too, yeah. So, Finney, yeah, Finney even, Elementary School. Yeah. So well, when, they, when, they, when they still used to be called the Bulldogs. Yeah, the Bulldogs, <laughs> Finney Bulldogs. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, I, I think, um, you know, in, in our neighborhood, you know, I think you were, uh, you know, being involved in all the stuff that you're involved in. Either you're going to join a gang, or or you're going to sell drugs, or or uh, or do music. And I think we kind of followed the music thing, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, and but you know, we we all got in some trouble here and there. And there's some of us that uh, that are still in trouble, and you know, all that good stuff. But um, as time progressed, I think um, you know, you kind of wake up to some of the reality, and we kind of followed the music route, you know, and, and, uh, try to put, you know, some more of the San Diego stuff on the map. And I mean, you've seen it, you know, growing up, you've seen all the Legion of Doom stuff and, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's just, it's funny, like where we grew up, um, you know, it's, it's almost just kind of like a, I don't know, it's like ground zero for a lot of the, like the, the hustlers that wanted to like take their craft to the next level, you know? 
and uh, like the Legion of Doom, they were the first ones to get into like the the warehouse where you actually sold like cassettes and records, you know. And you're just like, oh my god, like these guys are selling units, you know. And right. then uh, I remember, <laughs> yeah. And then you know, you know, like I said, people like Frankie J and Pod and Rey Mysterio, you know, he's a world renowned wrestling icon now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I mean, being surrounded by that stuff, we never knew back then that the stuff was going to blossom like that, you know, and. Um, you know, I just I, I think it's awesome just looking back at, you know, friendships we made and people that are still out hustling and doing stuff, you know, it's and it's an honor to be able to work with all these guys at, at their level, you know. So 11 year old Ruben was uh, was out um, just making friends, I think, and, and trying to uh, to not be the knucklehead that we should we should have been at, at those times, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just. It, it's funny to look back at all that stuff. A friend of ours posted a, a picture of like all this elementary school stuff. And he was like, dude, you know, I just wanted to forget some of that stuff. You know, <laughs> I think I was wearing like a mash shirt or I don't know what, you know, uh -huh. like just like, like, dude, is that what I was? I was a dork back then. You know, not that I'm not now, but, you know, it's just funny, like just to see all that stuff. And it's like, dude, you know, um, just how much, you know, times have changed. And, and uh, you know, it's just been a blessing to see doors open and from then to now, you know, and. You know, known you since elementary school, and now it's our like full circle, and here we go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're back, and you know, still we're both hustling. We're both, you know, doing stuff behind the mic and trying to uh, promote other people's stuff. You know, and it's it's cool to know that we're, you know, back at at ground ground zero. You mm -hmm. know, where it was all happening. When you were younger, uh, we, since our podcast is uh, also very pop culture and comic book centric. Yeah. Uh, were you into any comic books or like uh, TV shows or um, pop culture movies back then? You know, uh, to me growing up, um, Lucha Libre was a, a big deal. It was, you know, I, I grew up as like those guys are our superheroes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they had capes and, you know, you see Blue Demon and Santo and they're like, you know, in their mask, but they still got their capes on. And they're fighting the bad guys and they would make movies where they're fighting like mummies and zombies and, you know, the bad guys. And, you know what I'm saying? And it, to us... You know, I'd stay home. It was like black and white movies or whatever back in the day. But like, you know, you see these guys and they were they were superheroes, mm -hmm. you know. And so, I mean, to us, you know, and and uh, I never got to like go and watch those guys wrestle as a kid. So now as a big kid, you know, I'm like, oh, dude, this is, you know, what I'm saying like I'm just reliving the old school memories. But, um, you know, yeah, you're always a fan of like, oh, you know, the Superman and, you know, just the the stuff that that uh, that, you know, kind of the more the mainstream stuff. But uh, I think growing up where I, I grew up and how I grew up, I think, you know, I kind of attached more to like the the Latin stuff, like Mexican wrestling and and um, Chavo del Ocho and, and uh, um, you know, just the Chespirito, all, all, the, all the stuff that, that they would do back then. And, um, you know, it's just that stuff that, that we had, you know, growing up. And, um, you know, of course, you know, friends that we grew up with, they were always, you know, everybody had the just the normal, oh, Spider-Man and the, you know. But, you know, for us, it was just the Mexican wrestling stuff was mm -hmm. where it was at for me, you mm -hmm. know. So um, I guess maybe we can sort of segue into the stuff that you're working on now. Yeah. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, can you sort of tell us about your, your journey to this point? Like, what are some of the experiences that made you, uh, I guess, mold, help mold you to the person you are yeah. today? Um, well, you know, uh, being involved in all the stuff that, that we're involved in, I, when, when I chose hey, I'm going to try to see what I can do in the music side of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, you know, we always had like little gatherings and little events and I would always try to get as many people in one room as possible. Oh man, let's invite these people and those people. And, and uh, to me, I think promoting was always kind of like a, a big deal for me. Um, we had a little rap group back in the day called Smooth Roughness. And, you know, I don't really talk about it too much, you know, but, uh, you know, we had a little rap group called Smooth Roughness and we're, you know, trying to find venues for us to be able to do stuff. And uh, there wasn't a lot of that. And especially when you weren't, you know, over 21. Um, so, you know, we're sitting here like, man, you know, let's let's find something to where we can go and perform and get our music in front of like, you know, the people around us, the people, you know, our community, you know, the hip hop heads or whatever. And uh, there wasn't a lot of it. So I remember in 1992, I went and um, I asked the Boys and Girls Club in Chula Vista over here off of Oleander if I can do an event there. Mm -hmm. And they were like, okay, kind of weary about it. All right, well, you know, you're a 17-year-old kid trying to do, all right, well, we'll give you a shot, you know. So I had a, there was a band, they were called Eskatos before it was P.O.D. So um, 
So it was POD before, you know, POD. Okay. So um, we had them. Um, we had some of the guys from the Legion. We had Without a Warning and, uh, and of course, you know, Smooth Roughness stuff. And, um, and you know, we put out flyers. And we caught some flack. You know, we're on the cover of the Star News. It made it the cover of the Star News. Uh -huh. But not because it was such an awesome event, but it was because the Boys and Girls Club did an event. And on the flyer it said, um, you know, we had the parental advisory logo thing on there and they're like oh my god they're feeding you know kids the you know crazy language or whatever but to us it was just more of a warning like hey you know there's going to be some rappers that are there and they may cuss and whatever it wasn't like we're promoting the vulgarity it was just that it it might slip out you know it's hip-hop mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and so um so it you know it was a big deal like that but i think you know that was our very my very first like large size event that i did and then um, then I used the Boys and Girls Club over here off of L Street, and it just kind of like started going, you know, moving forward on on doing that. And so when uh, when I was as a rapper, I was performing. I uh, at one point I just, you know, I, I wanted to be able to continue in hip hop, but I didn't know in what direction. And so we had a chance, an opportunity to open up for uh, Run DMC, you know, okay. and Run DMC is you know one of my my heroes, you know, my right, hip hop right. heroes. So to me, I was like, dude, if we can just open up for Run DMC, like that's that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, that's all I ever wanted to do. So in 95, um, we had the opportunity to open up for Run DMC at uh, at the Belly Up. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it was crazy. You know, we're performing and then we're able to like look out in the audience and we see the guys from POD in, mm -hmm. in the audience watching us. Dude. So it's it just a trip, you know. And um but, you know, you, you're looking around and you see people you know, and then, you know, I'm like, dude, you know, I just, I'm backstage right now, run DMC, and to me it's a big deal. But uh, once we got off stage and we're back there, I, I remember seeing, like, some older guys in suits with the big old phones, you know, and um, and they're calling the shots. You know, they're telling people what to do, where to go, where, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And uh, and I realized, man, these older guys, like, that's where it's at to me. Um, I realized, like, dude, no one, no one wants to be on stage. Like, no, nobody wants to see a 70, 80 year old rapper on stage, you know. So I was like, but those guys, like, their career is not going to expire. Like, you can be old and still calling shots in the industry, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think after that show, I was like, you know what, I want to be that guy in the suit with the phone calling the shots, and not necessarily the guy on the stage, you know. So, uh, so I remember I, I was. Um, we're about to put out a little project with Rescue Records as a performer. And then uh, and then the owner, he had asked, hey, man, are you going to be an executive or like, do you want to be behind the scenes or mm -hmm. do you want to be a performer? Because, you know, you're going to have to put some work in on the, you know behind the scenes. And I was like, no, nah, I want to be an executive. And I think from that point forward, I was just like, dude, let me let me do some stuff behind the scenes. So, um, you know, I, you know, brambled on, but, you know, just. I dove into the music industry and um, when POD got signed to Atlantic records, um, I jumped into the film industry with a friend of mine, um, Devin Haven up in, in LA Fortress entertainment. So I was able to do a ton of music videos. Um, I was able to tour and travel with a bunch of, you know, just, just blessed enough to be able to like do the kid from South San Diego on mm -hmm. tour with like, you know, people like R Kelly or Busta Rhymes and all this cool stuff. And I'm sitting there like, dude, this is just, you know, it almost felt like this isn't supposed to be happening, but you know what I'm saying? Like you're just enjoying the ride, but, um, you know, and just being able to go do a bunch of cool, like film stuff and all that. And I didn't go to film school. I, you know, I'm a high school dropout. Um, I'm born in Tijuana, not even supposed to, you know, all the odds stacked against me. So to me, you know, when I'm handed a camera and they said, go learn, you know, I'm like, all right, how do you put the tape in? What do you do? And just learning it, you know, by experience and um, kind of like on the job training kind of deal, you know, and then being able just to go and, and uh, you know, tour with people like, you know, Papa Roach and, you know, Run DMC and all these people. And I'm just amazed at, at the, the journey of it. And then um, and then, you know, you get to a certain point where you start feeling like, what am I doing with all this? So like, you know, it was a gift, you know, and and you're able to get all these contacts and resources and know all these people and do all this cool stuff. But if you're not doing anything with it, then it means nothing. That's how I felt. So, um, so I was like, man, I, at some point, like I, I want to do something. I don't know what, but I want to do something. And then, um, in the midst of all that in 2010, I mean, I know it's a lot of gap from there, but in 2010, we went down, we're working on a documentary in, in, uh, in Mexico in Tijuana on, uh, anti-human trafficking. And one of the guys that we were interviewing, he um, he asked for a basketball, 
so that he can give back to the kids in the community because he felt like I'd done so much bad. I just want to do this one good thing. And that's that picture right there. So, oh. so he asked for a basketball so that he can give to the kids in his community. And um, that sparked Love Thy Neighbor. So I, I came I think, back. I think remember you telling me about that story. We, yeah. we took a picture uh, last year. Yeah, with you, the basketball. With the basketball. Yeah. Right? Okay. And so, uh, so that, that kind of, like that picture right there means a lot because it was one guy who in his heart, he just wanted to do something good. And it planted the seed inside of me to like, this is it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been wanting to do something that where I could use my resources and use the, you know, the influence and, you know, the platform that I had. And, and so to me, I was like, you know, this is it, you know, let's, mm -hmm. let's go in and, and do some stuff for the kids down in TJ. And it's just expanded in so much more. Um, and now, you know, we have what we call love thy neighbor. And at first it was because, um, you know, let's love our neighbors to the South down in, in, in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, it's also Bible scripture. And so we kind of translate it in all avenues. So, um, you know, we try to take care of, um, the prisoners, widows and orphans and homeless and whatever else we can do, you know, so it's kind of grew into a lot more mm -hmm. since then, but, um, but we don't forget the, the roots of, of where it came from with so that so basketball. You, you saw that, that, um, that moment right there was back in 2010. 2010. So yeah. from 2000, from that moment on, uh, how long, how much time passed until you first form started like formally made uh, love that neighbor? Um, we became a 501 C three last year, okay. and uh, you know we're just doing it kind of just out of you know the love for loving the community. And, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff, like it was coming out of my own pocket and now, you know, I'm going broke over here trying to do all the stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, uh, you know, a friend of mine, Mike Kellerman, he went to school with this as well. Right. Um, He's a badass tattoo artist. Yeah. South yeah. Bay Mike, uh, Blackwater Tattoo here in Chula Vista. And, um, you know, he came in and, and, uh, he was like, man, you know, can I, can I join, you know, what you're doing? And, um, you know, at, at that at that time, I had two other board members. I, I keep my board small. And um, I had uh, uh, Bo, he's up in Modesto, and then uh, Andy Gonzalez, he's here in, in San Diego. And mm -hmm. so Mike came in and he was like, dude, you know, I want, you know, I want to be a part of Love That Neighbor. So he came in and, and uh, he helped us financially with taking care of all the, you know, all the stuff to, to become a 501c3. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, since then, it's like we're trying to do stuff the way that we're supposed to now. And it's not easy, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, now it's like we're full blown legit. We can give tax, you know, tax write off receipts and all that cool stuff. But, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing like just doing it, you know, the homie style, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we're just going to do this event and then go down to TJ and give this and do that. But now like we're able to get grants and we're able to do a lot more. And, um, so we're going to be looking for some grant writers and do all that stuff. We just moved into our new facility and, um, and this is going to kind of be like a hub of, of, of doing good in this community. So we want to be um, like, you know, just a beacon of hope and some light in, uh, in the city that we grew up in, you know, and this is our stomping grounds. Mm -hmm. You too, this is our stomping grounds right. right here. You know? That's right. So, uh, you know, so to me, it's, it's a blessing being where, where we're able to, to, you know, be made available, you know, like there's availability here. Like you need something, come see us. I'm, you know, I'm here every day. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, come hang and let's see what we can do and let's, let's grow together, you know? So, uh, you know, do you want to talk about uh, maybe your first few Love That Neighbor events? Yeah. Um, our first one we did in front of, uh, it was in 2010. It was in front of Nitty's Tattoo on Broadway. And, um, and you know, it was just, we only had a couple of weeks to prepare. And, you know, this guy asked for a basketball. So I told him, hey, you know what? Let me go, let me go back and uh, get you a bunch of stuff and just bring you a bunch of toys and clothes, you know, um, and so we, we did it there and the response was overwhelming. And mm -hmm. so I didn't expect all that. And I'm like, man, how am I going to get all this stuff across? You know, <laughs> and now it's like putting the word out to where like, dude, anybody else, you know, have a ride, have a truck, anything else that we can like just try to sneak some of the stuff across. Cause you get taxed taking all the stuff down to TJ. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we had to sneak a bunch of stuff across, you know, usually like back in the day it was like, we're trying to sneak stuff over into the U S now it's the reverse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the sneak all the stuff down into Mexico. And so, uh, you know, it, it, the response was overwhelming. And then the next one we did over at, at, uh, at Barrio Logan. So we did, I think, a couple in Barrio Logan. And um, and the second one, we started getting, like, packages from, like, Texas, Las Vegas, Arizona. Um, we had the Los Angeles roller derby team, the Renegades. They drove down, like, a little mini 
like U-Haul full of toys that that they collected from their bout, and um, it the response was just incredible. So that's when we started adding the word movement to it because we're like, dude, this isn't just like a little Ruben Torres thing here, and this like this is like grown into more than what we thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, we just added the word you know movement to it. And, uh, and it just started kind of growing from there. And, uh, um, our partner, Bo, he's got, you know, love that neighbor in Modesto now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, Paco and his wife star, they're going to be doing it up in, uh, in LA now. And, it, you know, we're just trying to like grow the momentum of it and, and, you know, create it to where it's not just like, Oh, some guy in San Diego is doing a little love that neighbor. It's like, no, man, like it's the heart, it's the mind state, it's the mentality and just love on the people around you you know so um we did a couple times there in, in barrio logan and then the last two events we did over in uh in san isidro which to me was mind-blowing because when a large corporation lets you take over a multi-million dollar uh facility like you know the outlets at the border right i was blown away like are you serious like we can do anything we want here like you remember you said you yeah. walked in yeah. and it was just like dude there's like huge stores here you know and they're like letting us use like their vacant units and we had like a little skate room in there where kids are just skating and pro wrestling we had, ring. We had pro wrestling we had all <laughs> like, we had a barber shop <laughs> we had all kinds of stuff you know and so to me i'm just like you're serious like we can take over this place and just do whatever we want like to me that was just amazing like yeah. you know god smiling down on us like you know good job you know what i'm saying like go do this and so to me i just I was blown away. Then we did it again last year, and it, it was more of a concert. They were just like, hey, I don't know if we can do the skate stuff this year because we don't want to, you know. It was under new management, so they were just like, they wanted us to do it, but just a little more careful, like, oh, we don't want anyone getting hurt wrestling, so let's not do the wrestling. So, you know, we were kind of bummed out, like, okay, well, it's just going to be a concert this year. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll figure it out. So as in the midst of all that, um, Sweetwater Harley – you know, they seen kind of like the struggle and uh, and they were like, dude, well, for 2017, come do your event at our place. And there's no, you know what I'm saying, no restrictions. Like, dude, you want to have wrestling? Do wrestling. You want to do, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you want to do, just come do it and do it at our place. So this year we're going to be doing it at, uh, at Sweetwater Harley, um, December 8th and 9th. So December 8th, we're going to have, uh, not to fast forward and all that stuff, mm-hmm. but um, Ray Mysterio is going to come do an uh, autograph signing session December 8th. So anybody wants to come do meet and greet, you know, take pictures, whatever, just come and show up and bring a toy. Um, and then December 9th, we're going to have uh, Andy Vargas, the lead singer for Carlos Santana. He's going to come perform him. There's a, another Latin band called Boulevard de Scarga and a local reggae band called I Abide. So, um, cool. you know, I, we're not sure what's going on with the POD stuff yet, if they're going to, you know, mm-hmm. come through. Sonny usually always comes through either way, but... um you know, we don't know if we're going to have them perform yet. Um, you know, they performed for us last year and they came through and did autographs the year before. So mm-hmm. they're always supporters of the stuff we do. Um, you know, I know they're extremely busy right now, so we're for trying sure. to trying to work that. But, um, you know, come by and meet, you know, Ray Mysterio and, and uh, come listen to some good music. I know he's going to do some Santana songs. He's mm-hmm. uh, Andy Vargas is the lead singer for Carlos Santana. Um, he performed last year and just the audience just loved it. So Yeah, it was a good turnout. Um, yeah, and, and it's not even like, well, we, of course, would have invited him back, but he reached out to us, and he was like, dude, book me again for next year. <laughs> you know, so to me, that was an honor, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, we got this platinum worldwide, you know, he's a huge name, mm-hmm. and then for him to come down, and, you know, he donates his time, too, so right. um, everything that, that the artists do, it's they're donating their time to what we do, and um, any donations, anything that comes through just goes right back into what we're doing, so... Um, you know, just full circle, we're talking about it and, you know, stuff that comes in, like we're able to take trips up to Soledad State Prison mm-hmm. um, and, you know, go up there and hang out with the inmates up there and bring back some of this art and all this cool stuff. But um, that's how we're able to do everything that we do is from the support of the community. Great. So I guess we can move forward to the art aspect of the art aspect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why is art important to you? Um, well, you know, in, in talking like a talk about the prison stuff real quick mm-hmm. and, uh, and talking and having conversations with, uh, uh, the warden over at, at Soledad state prison. He, he was explaining how for them art is like rehabilitating. So when they're inside doing art, they're not out getting in trouble, you know? And, uh, to me, just let, let somebody express their creativity 
and uh, and and show their work, like they're proud of it. And then when they see that someone else is proud of what they're doing, like it's a big deal, you know. And uh, and for me to to be able to show somebody a piece of art and say, oh yeah, a friend of mine did this, and they're like, wow, that's a beautiful piece. And then I say, oh, that's from Soledad State Prison. And they're like, what? You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that ex- that whole like expression to me is like it's you know prices. So you know I, I love I love being able to promote what they do over there, but. Um, Art to me, I think, is is kind of like a hook, you know, like how do we get people to come in and get involved and get the community involved? Well, through art, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, even when I had a chance to go speak at at, uh, at Soledad State Prison at one of their art shows, um, I was able to be a judge and they asked me to come up and share a few words. But, you know, when you walk around the prison and you see some of the stuff that's laid out on the tables or that's hanging on the walls, you can't tell like who did what. So. You know, as you know, there's a lot of prison politics and it's like, OK, well, the Mexicans are here, the blacks over here, the white over here, the Asians. Over here. And it's it's just real segregated. But when the art is laid out on the tables, you don't know who did what. Mm-hmm. And so there's a piece, you know, this black guy did this piece and this Mexican guy did this, And they're all together. Mm-hmm. And so when you see the art that's laid out, you see the 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 passion that went into it and you see the heart of it. You don't see the outside and it's the same thing, you know, God judges the heart. He doesn't, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't look at the outside. He just looks at the heart. So to me, like the expression of the heart, when someone's painting, drawing, doing whatever their medium is, I think to me, that's, that's important. And, and I love allowing them or helping them um, show that, you know, ex- express that and promote that and create an exposure for it. Um, so to me, I, you know, I, I know the art scene is thriving here in San Diego and, and, you know, I wish I can, I can't even draw a happy face, you know, like I'm, I'm bad at even stick figures, you know, uh-huh. but, but I love being able to promote those that can do art and, uh, and just putting together, you know, events for them to like come and celebrate art, you know, it's, it's a big deal. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm an art lover, but I, you know, there's times I see a piece and I'm like, dude, I want that. And you're just like, dude, mm-hmm. you know, you know, if, if I could afford that, but you know, you walk through our office and you see all the, you know, the art that we have and, um, you know, you can't always afford all, you know, all the, the highbrow stuff, but there's a lot of people that donate art to love thy neighbor. And, um, you know, if we're able to sell it, it goes right back into what we're doing. Um, the prison art, we, if we sell it, you know, it goes back to their families. So, you know, I, I always encourage like, do if you want to buy some of the, some of the art, like, Try to support some of the prison stuff because that goes back into helping them. Oh, can you sort of uh, recount <clears throat> how you gave the actual material? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, in June of this year, we we put the word out um, asking the community to uh, to donate art supplies mm-hmm. for uh, for some of the inmates up in Soledad State Prison. That's like an eight-hour drive, you know. So, um, you know, we continually get invited to go up there and do stuff. So they asked us to come up and uh, be a part of this, uh, this event that they were doing. It was a relay for life cancer awareness event. And so I was like, cool, you know, let me, um, you know, what, what else can we do to get involved? And they're like, well, can you bring up a band? I was like, yeah. You know, I, so I invited, I abide. Well, we, we took two different bands up there at two different times. Um, this last one was I abide. And we took a DJ up there, DJ discern up from Modesto. And, and, um, and so we knew that we we're going to go back for the art show. So we're like, put the word out and said, Hey, you know, can the community of San Diego come together and donate some art supplies, brand new art supplies so we can take up to the prison. So we had everything from pencils, pens, brushes, you know, uh, charcoal, um, colored pencils, all kinds of stuff that went up. Mm-hmm. And so we went up, donated it in June. We went back up like a month and a half ago and to an art show. And then some of the, some of the pieces that were created in that art show were d- created with, the materials that we donated back in June. That's beautiful, man. And uh, yeah, yeah, and they presented some of it. And so some of it we came home with and you're going to be able to see at the Heart of Boxing show, at the Barn Burner show. So to me, I mean, that that gave me chills when I was like, are you serious? You guys made this with the, you know, and I was just like, dude, it's it's just going to be awesome for the community to be able to see like, the fruits of their labor. Like mm-hmm. this is what was created with the stuff that you gave us. You know, cool. let's, let's so, talk about the Barn Burner show right now. Yeah. Barn Burner, um, September 30th in Paradise, your neighborhood out in Paradise Hills. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a collaboration event with, um, the house of boxing, uh, Carlos Barragan, uh, one of the owners of the house of boxing. Um, he always wanted to do like a 1940s vibe, like boxing event. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I've been wanting to do a boxing art show. And, um, and so, you know, we, 
just kind of collaborate on it. And we're like, well, you want to do that one? I want to do this one. Why don't we just collaborate and do it here? You know? And uh, he's got like a cool old school looking vibe, box, like, you know, boxing gym. And um, we're like, man, you know, just started throwing around some ideas. We set a date on it and we did it. And, and uh, you know, it's coming together. Like, you know, we've got, uh, I want to say maybe like 10 different uh, classic cars, not low riders, but classic vintage cars from the 1940s. Like, no like, hydraulics. Like from Karate Kid or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah like okay. that kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, the San Diego PD is bringing by, they have a 1938 uh, paddy wagon. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so they're going to be bringing once in a while. Yeah. yeah, so they're going to bring that one by. Um, then we have um, four, we're going to have, it's five matches, but we're promoting it as four matches. Um, amateur, you know, boxing matches, some of the local guys here, and I think maybe like two guys from TJ. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's what we're saying, dude, that's crossing all lines because we got some Filipino boxers, we got, you know, some Mexican, we got black, you know, so it's, it's going to be something for everyone. Most of my events in the past have been, uh, you know, art and cultural events. This is, this is crosses all boundaries. You know, it's going to be yeah. it's something for everyone. So, um, then we have even like everything down to like the catering, the food that's going to be there. You know, the, there's going to be some cigarette girls like from back in the day, like walking around with the trays mm -hmm. and they're going to have, you know, little appetizer things, you know, with little <laughs> toothpicks where you can try out the and then you can go buy the food. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, there's going to be people dressed in the 1940s gear. Um, we brought on some actors from, uh, you know, some theater actors from here in San Diego that are actually going to be in character the whole entire show. So um, we got like a Mr. Big character. And, uh, you know, he's kind of going to be calling the shots. And then we got some guys that are going to be in the audience and, you know what I'm saying? Like yelling at some of the boxers, hit him, you bum, you know, doing all that kind of cool stuff. Got it. And then, uh, and then what else we got? Um, uh, Project Rio uh, Collective, they're going to, you know, be serving all the coffee stuff. They got a coffee shop across the street and they're going to be coming over and setting up that stuff. But even like the boxers are going to be that vintage old school get up, you know. Um, we got the old gloves, like everything. It's going to be, you're going to walk into an art experience. We're going to have some live art going on. Um, Everlast donated um, 100 gloves, um, boxing gloves that, that the artist can paint on. So you could see some of the stuff that, that, uh, that's that been coming in. There's still a bunch of stuff over at the gym. Mm -hmm. um, so artists have been painting on Everlast gloves. And so those are going to be hanging throughout the, you know, the gym. And then um, there's going to be some live art. We have a, a punching bag that we're going to be painting on, like whatever artists come through, they can paint on the bag. Mm -hmm. um, we got a couple cool little, like, you know, photo booth, little interactive things that we're going to be doing as well. Um, so all the way around, it's just going to be, you know, exciting to, to see all this stuff going on. We got a couple vendors. Um, for anybody that wants to come through and you want an adult beverage, the VFW next door. Um, they're also part of it. So some of the guys there are going to be like in the old sailor uniforms and all that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be a collaborating thing, but, um, you know, we usually do, you know, big, you know, you remember at, at some of the events, like we've had like a big old bar thing, whatever. And mm -hmm. so we're like, man, you know, we're not getting the permits for the alcohol, all that stuff, but right next door, it's connected to us. Like why not incorporate them? <laughs> Plus, you know, in that vibe, it was the big zoot suit versus the sailor thing. And it's like, what, you know, why don't we relive that except in a happy way, you know? So, um, so they're, they're part of it. Um, it's just going to be cool all the way around. You know, we're going to do a little red carpet thing. We got a teenage swing dance group that's going to be coming out they're going to be doing, doing their thing. Nice. Um, there's an artist by the name of, uh, David Patron. He's like old school crooner. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, I just he's seen him at Croce's when it was yeah, downtown. Yeah. Croce's butcher <laughs> shop, all kinds of spots. And um, so, you know, he's old school crooner vibe, like that Sinatra kind of style. And, and uh, he's going to be performing. Um, he's got a trio he's going to be bringing. So uh, he's going to perform at the end of the night. Um, we got a little, you know, a couple of surprises we're working on. Hopefully they come through. But, um, you know, just to know, like, oh, well, we got a teenage group of swing dancers are going to come through and do that. And then uh, DJ Ruben C, he's got um, a bunch of music from that era he's going to be playing. So it's going to be really um you're going to walk into the experience of it. We got some props. We got, all, you know, um, two eight foot installation pieces. So as soon as you walk in, you see these two big eight foot pieces of art that, you know, they're going to be at the front door, cool. do a little red carpet thing. And, you know, it's going to be, uh, I, I think none of this has been done yet, um, in San Diego that I know of. Um, so, you know, I think it's going to be historical, you know, and, um, you know, we've been, you know, tagging it as, you know, the largest boxing art show in the nation. Um, 
you know, most of the stuff that we've done, you know, like I didn't know of any other wrestling ones that, that have been, you know, in effect like that. So to me, you know, I tagged my other ones like, okay, largest Lucha Libre, you know, art <laughs> exhibition in the nation, because honestly, like the amount of art that came in for those was just incredible. Right. So, um, so, you know, now that I'm back in the saddle of doing art shows a little bit, you know, like we got about a hundred artists that, that are coming in, we got art coming in, um, a piece from Poland, a digital piece that came in from Poland, mm -hmm. um, a, a pen and pencil piece that came in from uh, Mexico, from San Luis Potosi. Um, we got some, uh, I think it's colored pencil stuff that came in from uh, North Carolina. So pretty much from everywhere, we got um, an artist coming in from Chicago. He's uh, part of the the Boxing Hall of Fame, and he he paints on gloves, so he's going to be coming through. And so to me, you know, it's a it's a big deal being able to get people from all over and kind of you know, collaborate all on one solid idea, you know. Um, and, you know, 20% uh, of everything that comes in, whether you, you know, buy a piece of food or you buy a ticket or you buy art, 20% um, of all that stuff is going to come back to Love Thy Neighbor so we can do the toy drive event. So, you know, we're not just doing it just to do it and put money, in, you know, in everyone's pockets. It's going to be, you know, you're going to see the fruits of your labor in December, you know, so whoever buys a ticket, buys a piece of art, you buy some food, there's going to be, you know, some of that labor that's going to go back into uh, some of those fruits back into December for the toy drive. So, you know, we're just trying to take it back, you know, full circle. So, you know, I think uh, anybody that gets involved is going to be um, happy with where their money went. You awesome. Know? I'm looking yeah. forward to checking it out. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun. So um, the heart of boxing, is it, uh, I remember your heart of uh, Loteria and your heart of the Lucha one. Yeah. Like how many other art shows have you had in the past? Um, you know, I've done, I did a couple like just straight love thy neighbor ones where mm -hmm. I just ask people just to bring art and, you know, it was part of the, the toy drive stuff. But, um, I've had a number of, I mean, I've had a couple of like the Lucha events, mm -hmm. um, the Loteria one, I don't know, I want to say probably like under, under 10, but when I do them, I try to do them big, you know, mm -hmm. and, and maybe that's, you know, maybe that's a blessing, maybe that's a curse. I don't know, but, you know, um, you know, I'm trying to tone down some of the stuff, you know, um, I haven't done a big show like this in, in a long time. Um, so I'm hoping this one's going to have the same effect that, you know, in the past, like the Lucha show. Um, you know, my very first Lucha show that I did probably had a um, little over 3,000 people. You know, we packed out the spot in Barrio Logan. And, I mean, those people up and down that street on Main Street, mm -hmm. um, you couldn't get in at some point, And it was just ridiculous, you know. So that we moved into um, – the the venue over in um, Babo Park, the Centro Cultural, mm -hmm. and um, you know that was a little bit more fitting for what we wanted to do. So you know I think people are going to be expecting those kind of events coming from what I've done in the past. So I'm hoping this kind of um, fits the bill of you know hope, I'm hoping that their expectations are met by by this event. You know because I I, I always say you know I just don't. I don't do just an art show. I do art events. Like this is an experience, you right. know. So you'll be able to walk around and get involved in some of this stuff. You know, you can paint on the punching bag. We're gonna create like a little boxing ring. We're gonna have a banner in the back where you can jump in the ring, take a picture. You know, do that kind of stuff that's gonna be interactive and creative. So um, just want to try to create an experience for the community, and um, you know, we're hoping this one meets everyone's expectations. You know, cool. I guess uh, since we're still on the subject of art, um, we have a segment of, of the podcast called Art Watch. Mm. Uh, are there any artists out there that you sort of want to, you know, rep and um, give a shout out to? Well, always, uh, you know, I, I always feel like I, I got to pick from like one of my favorite kids. Like when you say, like, hey, so you got three kids, <laughs> which one's your favorite? You know, you're like, oh. Um, we'll tell you what we'll have you on the podcast again and then you can we'll, we'll have you on continually yeah. you, can, you can you can continually rip out yeah yeah all, we'll, all we'll, we'll, we'll shout out some of the, <laughs> the artists um if i can do one i mean you know the wall behind us here in in uh in our love thy neighbor office here um junko junko cancha he uh he did if you guys go to barrio logan and you walk into uh border x brewery um you get to see some of his art all in on those walls that are in there so uh so at the last Heart of Lucha, he, he seen me and Sonny standing on the red carpet right there. Mm -hmm. And he drew me and Sonny, like his arm around me and like, you know, it looked like a photo. Like I was like, dude, that was cool. I can't believe you did that. Like, that was awesome. When'd you do it? And, um, you know, I was just tripping that he even did that. And then, uh, 
So I'd ran into him not too long ago in Barrio Logan, and I was like, hey, dude, you know, we're going to be moving to some office space. You think you can come and do something? And he just came and did like a whole tribute to the South Bay, South mm -hmm. San Diego, cool. um, we'll here on our wall. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, so I want to shout him out. And um, definitely one of my favorite artists, too, in San Diego is, uh, is Chicle. I don't, I don't know if you're, you're familiar with Chicle, but um, he's also a teacher over at High Tech High. He's an art teacher at High Tech High. I think it's an 11th grade art teacher over mm -hmm. there. Um, and he's also one of the owners of uh, the uh, Project Rio Collective, um, okay. the coffee shop over there, across cool. street from the from the gym. We'll look him up. Yeah, yeah, and he's 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 not just an awesome person, and and he's growing that community. Um, but you know, he's an awesome teacher, and just you know, I love you know his, his simple art. You know, there's a group of guys that that he rolls with too. Um, you know, of course, you know Max and uh, Johnny Nunez. Um, Ricardo Islas, like all these dudes that are just like doing stuff that, you know, to me, I just think are just next level, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's a, I mean, you can kind of look through some of the stuff that we got here and, um, there's a guy down in Mexico, um, uh, Alex Reyes, he's a graphic designer too, but when he does, he, he brought in a piece that's a uh, pencil and pen and it's a Canelo piece. And I'm just, I was just amazed that, you know what I'm saying? Like some of the stuff that people are turning in, you know? Um, so yeah, I just want to more shout, shout these guys out because, yeah, sure. you know, um, you know, they're super talented and I just, there's so many artists that I just want to show love to. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, these guys always show me love and kind of support every time I do an event. So, um, make sure you check them out when you cool. get a chance. Alex, do you have an artist that you want to? Yeah. Actually, it was an artist that we met at, um, I think it was your first, uh, Love Thy Neighbor event yeah. in uh the outlets was uh he goes by uh mex live on instagram yeah, yeah max yeah he does some great work um yeah, and you. a lot of uh aerosol paints uh, yeah. some paintings even some sculpture too yeah. and um it's involved in the community a lot and so go check him out um instagram at mex underscore live yeah on Instagram. And if you need any stickers or anything, he does he does oh, a ton yeah. of stickers. Does done stickers so stuff. yeah, he did a he did our love thy neighbor stickers. He did our connected with Ruben Torres podcast stickers. Um, he did some house of boxing stickers. He does all kinds of stuff. So reach out to him. He's he's a great dude, great guy in the community. He does photography too. Um, you can catch him in Barrio Logan all the time, especially when they do the vuelta, all the low riding stuff. He's doing the low riding photos. So he's a, a great dude. Um, he's got a ton of resources. Great artist and. Uh, you know, you guys need anything from him? He's always open. You yeah. know, he's, so he's shout always out been, to Max. He, yeah, he's always been cool to us when, when we see yeah. him around. Yeah, and he always he he, he blocks his face. You know, sometimes <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't want people to know who he is. You know, on, on the on the Instagram, but uh, yeah. but you'll find him. Just ask around, you'll find him. Yeah, <laughs> he's a good dude. I guess for me, it's somebody that I've uh, sort of uh, talked about in the past. Um, his name is Orlando Arocina. Uh, he's part of the Poster Posse. He's a badass vector artist. Uh, he, what? Normal vector artists and other graphic designers can do in six days. He can do in six hours. He's that good. Wow. What's his name? Orlando Arosano. Orlando. Yeah. He, Man, I gotta find that dude. Yeah, his uh, his website is mexafunk dot Mexafunk. Yeah. Oh, I like that. He just did some uh, pretty badass uh, uh, pieces for like like Halloween theme. Mm. So and he does a lot of. Uh, uh, we're sort of getting to the time where he's going to start doing some of his uh, Dia de, de los Muertos oh, nice. uh, influence type stuff because yeah. he's he's. Half Cuban and half Mexican. So, nice. Yeah. So look him up. He's part of Poster Posse. Um, actually, Poster Posse is up in... Uh, Poster Posse? Yeah. Sick. Uh, go to posterposse.com. Uh, the person that runs that, his name is Don Thompson. He was actually one of our first interviews yeah, uh, yeah, back sure. in 2014. Uh, and uh, he's actually... Don's actually in uh, the UK right now at a convention called Thought Bubble. So uh, shout out to Poster Posse, and especially to Orlando. Uh, nice. Go I check, out, check his him stuff. out Yeah. He's yeah. badass, man. Um, I guess uh, we'll go to Alex for the Thunder Round questions. Yeah, Uh-oh. <laughs> I get scared with all these, like, it's like a, one of those speed round <laughs> things or whatever. Like, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> all right. So first question, uh, if we gave you a million dollars and you had to spend it all in one day, what would you do with it? Oh, God. <laughs> um, I mean, knowing me, I think um, – does it matter how you spend it, or is it? Is it? Do you have to no, show it's, anything? It's, it's not like Brewster's Millions. Like, well, it's like it's like Brewster's Millions, but you know, uh, um, no, because you know Brewster's Millions, you have to like show the receipts. No, 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 don't, 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 worry, yeah. don't worry about that. So you know, <laughs> trying to get technical with it. No, no. Um, I don't know, man. Of course, probably just um, 
you know, even if I said, oh, yeah, you're going to buy a house here in San Diego, like half of that's gone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're like, all right. But uh, I think probably, you know, yeah, probably just, you know, buy a house, put some stuff away for my kids to, to you know, do whatever they want to do at, after high school, if it's going to be college or, you know, a trade, you know, my son in film school or whatever it might be. But um, just, I think, pour back into the community, like what we're doing here um, with, uh, with like, you know, we're talking about building a studio here next door, building some classrooms and doing stuff to empower the community. I think, um, I think that's kind of where my, uh, where my head's at right now being 43 years old and seeing all the stuff that we see and going through all the stuff that we did. I think, uh, I think it's pouring back into my community is what I would do. You know, I mean, it, it, I'm not trying to sound all preachy about it. I just, that's just kind of where I'm at with life right now. You know, like take care of my family and then take care of my community, you know? Cool. Nice. I can dig it in. So anybody got a million dollar check? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. Um, nowadays, there's a lot of reboots and remakes of you know old movies. Uh-huh. What's a uh, one 1980s uh, a movies from the 80s that you wouldn't mind them rebooting? Oh or man. You know what? Um, back in the 90s, I always said, dude, wouldn't it be great if Cheech and Chong did another movie? Like, and just they called it Best Buds. You know, back then, you know, well, That's I was a pothead back cool then time. too, you know, so to me, I was like, dude, where's Cheech and Chong in the midst of all this? You know, yeah. you got Cypress Hill and everybody's talking about, you know, smoking, but I was just like, dude, like, wouldn't it be cool if Cheech and Chong did something? And then uh, a couple of years ago, I actually had the opportunity to sit down with Cheech and interview him. And, um, you know, he was saying that, yeah, there might be a possibility of them doing something, you know, but I just always thought, man, how cool would it be if they, if they came back in the midst of like of you know that big weed revolution that went on you know i was like dude that would be awesome for that you know but um but you know i i, I think most of the stuff is like being done like you know like i, I used to like to watch like a team you know and all that <laughs> stuff back then it's been done you know um dukes of hazard has been done you know all that stuff like and then you know to me i think my favorite um thing that has come out you know since you know like from comic book stuff and all that um you know, I love the Tony Stark character, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm like, dude, if, you know, I don't know, like all that cool yeah. stuff has been done. I think, you know, the Spider-Man thing has been done way too much, but yeah, you know, I think all of it's kind of already been done, but, um, the only thing I can think of off, off the bat would be Cheech and Chong, you know, to me, I think would be, <laughs> be would cool. be cool. Especially when, uh, you know, them legalizing it. Yeah. Pretty like, soon, so. like that, I think that would, <laughs> you know, that would blow up, you know, mm-hmm. right, right now Cheech and Chong would blow up. That'd be cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next question. Um, pretty easy one. What kind of music are you listening to right now? Um, you know, I've 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 traveled the path of hip hop and rock and did all that stuff, and um, definitely hip hop is not what it used to be. Um, so I've I've steered away from a lot of the hip hop stuff right now. Like I, it like I would rather stab my eardrums with a rusty like nail like. Uh, <laughs> when I listen to the new hip hop stuff that's out, like it's, it's just to me, it's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of that stuff's like just garbage that's been coming out. So I stay away from all that. Um, you know, there might be some cool stuff here and there that's coming out where you're like, okay, that that could be acceptable. You know, but I think right now I'm just kind of going back to more of the old school reggae stuff. You know, um, I, I love reggae. Uh, you know, we've always kind of had a like reggae influence the whole Southern California music scene. You know, there's always been a little bit of reggae, like whether it's like sublime or, you know, any of the stuff that comes, no doubt all that stuff. There's always been a little reggae infusion and all that stuff. And, um, I think, you know, it's kind of embedded in our culture and I think I'm kind of going back towards more of the reggae stuff right now. Cool. It's just me. I don't know. I don't know. know, Classic rock, reggae. It's always, always, always good to listen to. Yeah. All right. What's one thing you learned this week? Easy. One thing I learned this way, I don't know, I was just asking my son, hey, do you learn anything when you're with me? I don't know. <laughs> um, one thing I learned this week, I think, uh, you know, probably just in, um, in, you know, a friend of mine had a little Bible study here on Wednesday, and we're just talking, going back on, you know, some of the life, some of the biblical characters. But I think uh, integrity over popularity is is a big deal to, to me, you know, right now. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I think I went through a, a, a part in my life, you know, a little time in my life where it's like you strive for the popularity, you strive for the likes, you strive for the, you know what I'm saying, how many people are going to get to follow this and do all that. And I think, um, I think you know, it, it takes years to build up your name 
and it can take seconds and minutes to ruin it, you know? So I think integrity with your name has been something that, that I've been learning right now. Like I, I would rather have, you know, you're always going to have your little haters and oh yeah, everyone's doing that. And they don't even have the full story of, of whatever it might be. But, um, I think having a good name, you know, um, is, is, is golden, you know, that that's worth more than that million dollar check sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, Oh, Ruben's doing some good stuff in the community rather than, Oh, Ruben's stealing from whoever, you know what I'm saying? It just takes one person to, to poison the minds of those around them to ruin something that you've spent years to build. And so, uh, you know, I think integrity over popularity is, is, uh, is something that you can pass down to your kids, to your friends, to, you know, anybody where you could say, dude, I just learned this and you better like protect that, protect your name. It's golden. You know, um, you know, I've been doing that. I, I tend to brand myself on everything I do. And, you know, when I was doing all the art shows and I was doing all these events, I would always put Ruben Torres presents. I would put Ruben Torres on everything. Now I'm trying to do more of the love thy neighbor, like love thy neighbor, this, love thy, to where it's not always about me. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but even those those brands, you know, I do the the podcast connected with Ruben Torres, and I put Ruben Torres and everything, and I've created myself into this brand. Um, you know, that's something that I was taught, so I created that into a brand, and uh, and I think once you create that that brand, you want it to be something that that uh, that continues to hold weight and continues to mean something um, for you and for those around you, and. You know, I mean, anybody that knows any kind of brand, you know that you want it to, you know, stay that, um, you know, have it integrity. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you, you don't want it to, to be something like, ah, I don't mess with those guys anymore. I heard they do this or whatever it might be. You know, you want to, you know, maintain your name. Mm-hmm. I think it's something I learned. Yeah, it's good that you picked that up. Yeah. It's important when you're trying to sort of, uh, not only when you're, when you're trying to build something yeah. and then you sort of have that. Uh, notoriety already established yeah. so and then people buy in to say oh I'll support you because I know what you're all about already yeah you know I mean I, I think it's part of the reason that that you're here today as well because you knew me way back then and then now you actually see you know the stuff that we do and the stuff that we've been involved in and it's that notoriety of like oh man he's doing something good you know um, because if, if I was a scumbag you wouldn't be here wanting to know anything about me you know what i'm saying well, I, I think that's one reason why we uh, why i sort of feel an affinity to, you know for you as mm-hmm. well is because what you're trying to do with the community and with the art movement mm-hmm. is sort of like what we do uh, at the conventions mm-hmm. and with artists that we meet online you know we obviously at, at samuel comic-con it, it's, it's it's changed throughout the years yeah. so it's becoming you know so big and, and so quote-unquote hollywood yeah. that a lot of the artists sort of get pushed to the side yeah. a little bit so uh, we kind of thought, you know what? That's going to be our, our niche. We're going to put the spotlight back on, on artists. the artists. Yeah. So it, it's sort of ironic because we're called Hollage dot com, but we don't we don't cover all the the mainstream Hollage stuff at, at uh-huh. Comic Con because Hollage is is the, is the hall or the the room where they where Marvel and DC showcase all the yeah. exclusive stuff. Yeah. We're mostly outside talking to the artists. That's you know? what it means. <laughs> That's yeah. what it means. Hall H, you guys. I, I didn't realize that. That was cool. Yeah. I, I was going to ask you about that. What does Hall H mean? But yeah, it's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, thank you guys too, man, for spotlighting, you know, artists. I think sometimes, um, you know, cause I, I, I always think back like, dude, everything is a, is an art form. Like it, it could be culinary art. Like yeah, you know, exactly. sometimes when people make food and it, you're just like, wow, like this is all, and you're taking pictures and it's the presentation, like everything is an art form, whether you're making beats or whether you're a barber or whatever it may be, you know, mm-hmm. like I look at all those things as an art form, you know? And, uh, and sometimes I think, you know, artists get shunned or they don't get the credit they deserve. And, um, I think it's, you know, it's people like you get, like you guys that are, you know, helping maintain that, you know, keep that alive, you know, to where, you know, it's, it's not always like, oh, you know, we're going to move you to a different hall or, you know what I'm saying? You're going to go to the back or on the side or on the corner and, you know, we'll talk to you later. And it's like, no, man, like I try to put, um, people I know that are doing stuff on the same level as like you know, the people that are celebrities and have, you know, so I'll, I interview, you know, I got a friend of mine who works with the people, he helps people with the mental disabilities or, or, uh, you know, struggling with depression and all that stuff. And I've had him on my show Mm -hmm. and, you know, and again, you know, I've had the POD guys on my show and it's, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it doesn't matter if you're a multi-platinum artist or you're just helping some people in the community that, 
that are, you know, helping people with depression, like it, it, you're on the same level as far as I'm concerned, because you're, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're putting your stuff out there. And, right. and, uh, and so, you know, I, I thank you guys too, man, for keeping the spotlight on, on the artists and, and the, the, the people that deserve the exposure and the spotlight, you know, so thank you guys for doing what you do too, you know? Cool. Uh, and guys you, like me too. You exactly. Know that. <laughs> You know, one more question? Uh, uh, last one. All right. If you could have a meal with anyone, dead or alive, Ooh. who would it be? Where would you eat? And what would you talk about? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, the 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 spiritual aspect of me, I'd probably say, you know, Jesus, you know, of course. Um, you know, someone alive, you know, I, for some reason I find Mike Tyson really, like, intriguing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because the person that, you know, we always once thought he was like this monster, like, you know, I'll bite your ear off, you know. Mm -hmm. And then like the person that he's become now, I'm just like, dude, he's like that dude. He's not the monster everybody thought he was. You know, he's just awesome. Like um, I, I find him very um, like there's a brutal honesty about him. Um, and, you know, I just think like how cool would it be just to like get in the mind of that guy, you know, and find out. You know, I don't know, but like there's something intriguing mm -hmm. to me about him. But, um, but you know, of course, Jesus, like how – how profound would it be to be able to sit with Jesus and just say, dude, what am I thinking? Or you already know my thoughts. You already know what I'm going to do. You already know, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just to be able to ask for some grace and mercy on, Hey, you know, I want to mess up when I'm, you know, 38 or whatever, and make sure you overlook some of that or whatever it might be, you know? But, um, you know, I, I think just, just being able to, to sit with, um, you know, with Jesus back then, or, you know, I don't know, to me, like that's, that's the ultimate, you know, but, uh, where, where would you take the meat? Um, I don't know, man. That's a, that's a good one. <laughs> you know, every, every time someone comes in, I, I try to take them down to the barrio, like, hey, let's go eat over at Salud or something. But um, with Jesus, I would probably say, let's do it right here. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? Let's yeah. let's get some food catered. Well, we, and, are, uh, we are at the church. <laughs> yeah, we are at the church. <laughs> yeah. um, a, a friend of ours, uh, uh, Avian's house, he, uh, he came and he catered our... Um, he catered our uh, our open house last Thursday, and uh, dude, some bomb Hawaiian food. And I was like, dude, this is just like I hadn't had that that good in a long time. It's like it's like L and L times a hundred. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> on steroids. <laughs> and so I was like, dude, if we can do that again, you know. Um, so I don't know. I'd probably have Avian's house come through and cook something up and have have a little one on one with Jesus right here and just be like, tell me what do I got to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I think. Um, you know, that's the spiritual side of it, and mm -hmm. the non-spiritual side would probably be like, I, you know, I'd, I wouldn't mind hanging out with, you know, Mike Tyson, or even just, you know, on the music side, like, I think Bob Marley would be just so intriguing to just, like, get in the mind of, and, you know, his mind state of the way that he, you know, the way that he looked at stuff, and, and you know, there's, you, you see some of these interviews where he's just like, you know, they asked him, like, well, you got to be making all this money now, and he's like, money, like... Like, you know, why, you know, you think that I'm rich, like, you know, those that don't have anything are rich. You know what I'm saying like the, just like his mind state and the way he, he twists stuff to, so you see the positive and things, you know, I think, uh, it's, it's always beautiful. I don't know, you know, you mm -hmm. can go down the long list of, sure. of that stuff, you know, but, um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with those. Cool. Um, you touched on something earlier about, um, when you talked about integrity, mm -hmm. when we were talking about branding, mm -hmm. um, I sort of want to go into maybe some advice you can give to to people out there who are trying to maybe uh, form their own uh, sort of you know love, love thy neighbor type of mm -hmm. movements and maybe some sort of other art 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 uh, movements as well. Yeah. Um, whatever advice I I would give would always be and and uh, I I always look back at my my failures or my you know my mistakes and stuff that I've done to try to create something positive out of it. So I would say um, anybody that's looking to do anything, whether it's an arts or a business or whatever it might be, I would say go back and be great at one thing instead of being okay at 10 things. You know, um, I think a mistake of mine was like, dude, I was doing artist management. I had a record label. I've, I've owned a clothing line. You know, um, I've done all these different it's like remember when Forrest Gump in the movie Forrest Gump he's like oh someone hands him a shirt and he's like have a nice day and you see <laughs> yeah. the, the thing and yeah, yeah. and uh, you know he's teaching Elvis how to 
how to do the pelvis thing, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, and he, he was part of all these different, like, oh, ping pong, ping pong. and then, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's at the monument, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, you know, he was part of all these different things, and it was like, dude, that's cool. He was part of history with that. And and so that's kind of how I feel, like, okay, I was involved in, in wrestling, you know, uh, back in 98, where I was able to make some cool stuff for Rey Mysterio and Conan and all these guys. And then, you know, I went and I did the film stuff, and did, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like... I'm okay at doing, you know, 10 different things, but I'm not great at doing one of them. So I would always say, just go back and be great at that one thing mm -hmm. instead of being okay at 10, you know, and it's okay to be great at 10, but just go for what, where your heart's at and just be great at that one thing and then let everything else just kind of come secondary. So that's what I would say. You know, my, my, uh, my mistakes have always been, you know, um, you know, you kind of get distracted at the shiny things sometimes. Like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll do an art show. Oh, yeah, cool. I'll do, you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. hey, simmer down, niche down on, on what you want to do and and uh, and build that, you know. Um, so, you know, right now, it's even right now, like, okay, I'm doing the art show. I got the, the podcast thing. I got the, you know, love that neighbor thing. And it's like, you know, I'm spreading myself but you're too spending, thin. But you're spreading yourself on the things that you know you're good at. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, I've, I've grown, uh, I've grown kind of a, a taste to be behind the mic now and I, you know, I like it, mm -hmm. you know, I, I like being able to have my platform and, and share my thoughts and being able to share someone else's journey on my show on my pl platform. But, um, you know, I, I think I'm getting more kind of comfortable with, yeah, with I, I feel you because, because we, 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 on our journey, like our podcast is uh, approaching our first year anniversary and it's like, I didn't think I would enjoy this as much. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It, it's fun and it's it's your platform. It's your it's you know, you're inviting people like myself to come and share their journey and it's just like one big circle and to me I you know, I love being able to tell stories and and allowing someone else to tell their story and I think I think it helps. Mm -hmm. You know, to me like I you know, I've I can show you um emails or messages or whatever from people like telling me dude how inspirational it is you know to hear all these stories and to me i'm like wow i never thought that it was going to turn into that you know but you know now i think i'm finding something like my own little niche my own you know mm -hmm. and you know it's you know i haven't announced it or nothing but um you know just this last week i had a guy who, who came down from northern california to come visit um he works with a couple different like television networks or whatever. And he just came, hung out for a couple of days and, you know, we had thrown around the idea of turning, you know, the connected with Ruben Torres show into maybe like a reality show to where, you know, kind of follow, you know, follow me around and do some do good stuff. And mm -hmm. Hey, let's go to the homeless shelter. Let's go to the, mm. down to the orphanage and TJ or, you know what I'm saying? And, and to me, I'm like, wow, I never really thought about that and how awesome that would be. And, and so, I don't know, to me, I'm like, dude, maybe that's some, another avenue. But, you know, I, I want it to be to where, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, to me spiritually that that's what God wants me to do. And mm -hmm. not just, you know, not just a good idea, but a God idea. Because, I, you know, I want, I don't want it to be where it's just like it's a Ruben Torres thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want it to be like this is ordained and this is meant to be. And, um you know, to where it's not robotic. Like I want to be able to touch some lives through it and change some lives through it. And, and, um, you know, just today, the pastor earlier, he was, he was saying that there was a guy, I think it was John Wesleyan where he was, uh, he said, you know, I just want to, I just want to go get on fire and let other people watch me burn. You know what I'm saying? And, and to me, you know, I, I want to be able to do, I want to get that, that fire of God in me and just be able to go into a neighborhood and just do good. And people like, there's something different about that guy. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think that's a platform where, you know, I, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm not any of this stuff. But if I can just do it through actions, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I've heard that word. Uh, it, there's a saying that says, um, always preach the gospel and sometimes use words. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> dude, I'll, through your actions, that's what people look at. And yeah. so um, I, I want that to be something where we can create a platform where people just see actions like, Oh, he's doing that. Oh, he's going over there. Oh, he's hanging out with these orphans. He's hang like, why are you doing what you what you're doing? And and uh, you know, just I feel that that's what we're supposed to be doing. You mm -hmm. know, what I'm saying it's like, well, why aren't you doing it? You know, it's what we're supposed to be doing. And I think I want to 
I want to be able to create more platforms, not just for myself with Love Thy Neighbor or, or The Connected Show, but through those things, trying to teach other people, like other people in the neighborhood and the community, like, hey, you guys want to do a, a, a podcast? We'll show you how to do it. Like, come here and we'll you can use this space. You know, we'll show you how to do it. Oh, you want to do a show, reality show, TV, whatever. Like, we got our, you know, uh, Tim Hernandez is right here in our room. Like, he, you know, he can help you, you know, do your media, your websites or whatever, mm -hmm. and just keep it all in house, but empower, you know, we always say let's, in, let's inspire, empower and love the community around us, you know? And so to me, it's like, dude, if we can empower kids, people, anybody to, to do like what you guys do and what we're doing here, um, I think that's the ultimate, the ultimate end gift, you know, where you learn all these things and then you pass it down, you know, my son, he does like, you know, um, vlogging and you know mm -hmm. he's, he's building up his youtube community nice. and doing all these things so to me i'm like dude if if he can learn from just being around here and soak up some of the stuff that mm -hmm. that we all do you know um i think it's the ultimate give back you know when you're able to give what you've learned and give back you know definitely i mean you touched on something the mobile phone is like this generation's tv yeah you know yeah. Is you you can sort of bypass that barrier to entry yeah. because I think the internet is such a, a great equalizer. Yeah, you know, um, and and I guess to the your your connected show idea, I was thinking just off the top of my head right now, what if the first season is you, but the second season you pass the torch to somebody else? Yeah, you know, yeah. and then it's like the day in the life of or a week in the life or whatever of of, yeah. of, of somebody else. Yeah, you know, it's not cool. a bad idea. Yeah, and just have someone. Else. You can do love thy neighbor, and it can, yeah. it's not me; it's right. everyone else. Right. That would be awesome. Yeah. I like that. I have to write that down. I have to remember that part of it. <laughs> but, uh, dude, to to me, like I, I've always said, that's why I was saying I was trying to shift the the narrative of like, oh, Ruben Torres presents to love thy neighbor because you know I feel like it's not about me. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to I want to leave a legacy of of not being selfish, of not. I'm saying like it's not about me. Like oh, look, you know, maybe my son will take over. Love thy neighbor. I don't know. Like just, it's it's a movement. It's everybody. And so like I was saying, um, Bo Harrow's up in Modesto. Like he's got his chapter, Love thy neighbor. And then you know Paco Paco Manson, his wife. They they're doing the L.A. thing, Love mm -hmm. thy neighbor. And so I want it to be a, you know, hey man, you know, you guys want to do it out in Paradise Hills here, dude? Let's. You know what I'm saying let's. It's it's not about just us. And even if you didn't even use the Love thy neighbor name, just do something you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. create some kind of action dude you know i got hit up um like four different times this week hey you guys gonna do anything for mexico you know you guys and you know in my mind i'm just thinking like no but you guys can you know what i'm saying like don't don't wait on someone else to do something like take the torch run with it grab like do something like right doesn't matter what you do just do something and um uh, you know like it, it's so hard to like every time there's a tragedy or some kind of devastation going on, like where you're like, okay, I got to do something for Texas. Oh, I got to do something for Mexico now. Oh, Puerto Rico as well. You know, my kids are half Puerto Rican. My wife's Puerto Rican. So it's like, I, still, I still live there. Did you in Puerto Rico? Yeah. Nice. What part? Uh, like Sabo, Rural oh. Roads. You, you still got people out there? No. Well, my dad was in the military. So oh, yeah, he was right. kind of stationed over there. Well, you know, it, then it's, it's a place that you would hold kind of close to your heart because you're like, dude, I was there. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I want to make sure that, that community is okay. And, you know, people that have something that's closer, like TJ to me, you know, that's close to my heart. You know, I was born in TJ. So to me, it's like, that's the whole thing that sparked this whole basketball thing. You know, like I want to go help kids in TJ. I was a kid in TJ, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, when, when you see a tragedy happen or you see stuff happen, like feel free to take the initiative and do something. You don't have to wait for other people or wait for the Red Cross or wait for an organization just do it. And that's how movements begin. Mm -hmm. You know, just do, just do, do that. Go give a basketball to someone and then spark it into something else. You know, um, not that it's very profound, but, you know, Tupac, you know, I, I don't want to mess up the words, you know, his, his quote. But he was saying, like, dude, I may not be the, the one that changes the world, but but I'll spark the fire in someone else that may. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like, that's that's the mentality to have, I think, you know, like, dude, don't. You know, you don't have to message me and ask me if we're going to do something in Mexico. You can do it on your own. Don't ask me about Puerto Rico. You can, I mean, I'm not saying don't. You still can reach out, whatever, if we are doing some stuff. But I'm just saying, like, feel free to take initiative and do some stuff. And, dude, I had people hit me up. Hey, Ruben, we're going to be collecting stuff for Mexico. And Cool. Share. Share it. I'll tell my people to go do that, mm -hmm. you know. And um, 
I'm not doing anything for Hurricane Harvey, but I linked up with Frankie J and he's doing something. And, you know, I, I want to support those that are. And so we, you know, we collected some, some, uh, donations for them, but, um, you know, like we're, we're not that huge yet. We're not the Red Cross. We're not, you know what I'm saying? We're not at that level to be able to do all that stuff, but, you know, we want to be able to take the, the little bit of influence and power in our community that we got and help those that are actually doing it, you know? So, um, you know, I just want to encourage, you know, everyone else that has a heart and wants to do something like, dude, just, just do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I hope Nike sees that and they make a shirt, love that neighbor shirt. <laughs> but, uh, just, just do something, man. And it doesn't have to be with Love Thy Neighbor. And if you want to partner with us, then cool. Go to lovethyneighbormovement.com. You could always donate a little something there. But um, if not, man, just do do your own thing. As long as you do something. Doing nothing is worse than, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you can sit back and, and criticize everyone else is doing something or someone did something wrong or this person kept that money or whatever it might be. But when you don't do anything, I think that's worse, mm-hmm. you know. So just do it. Be encouraged to do it. Yeah. Cool. That's uh, really good advice. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. yeah thank you. Um, I guess we'll start closing out the show. Um, is there anything else that uh, you want to tell our audience that you think we missed? Um, be uh, be on the lookout for um, we're relaunching the podcast mm-hmm. um, soon. It's going to be a little more community uh, community uh, based, um, but that's connect with Ruben Torres, connect with Ruben Torres dot com, and you can find it on iTunes as well. And we're not. I don't think we're going to do like a real huge. Um, relaunch like you know like a, cam- a, like a campaign for it or yeah like yeah it's just we're just going to pick up where we left off uh-huh. um but you know on the production side of it we may have a little more maybe some commercials or whatever it might be and i think we're going to involve the community more um to where it's not just like celebrity based it'll be anybody who's doing anything we're just going to cool. give, give us, give us a heads stuff. up we'll, we'll we'll help support on, on social media no, appreciate it yeah. and we'll have to have you guys on and come out and you know, make sure you guys come out and promote what you guys are doing yeah, as well. We'd, we'd be happy to. Yeah. And um, other than that, you know, make sure you uh, you check out the upcoming events and uh, check out the website and, uh, you know, support the arts, whether it's um, in this community, any community, just support the arts somehow. Any, and when, when I say support, like support our stuff, Hall H, um, Connected, Love Thy Neighbor, any events, um, a lot of people think it's like, oh, you know, you got to donate money. You know, it, it's not about that. Simply hitting a share button, you don't even have to type in the words like make sure you get it, whatever. And just hit the share button. Like to me, that's supporting. Mm-hmm. You want to support the people in the community, you want to support some artists. When they're doing something, just hit the 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 support, you know, the share button. And and cool. Hey, I might not be able to go to the show. I might not be able to donate some money. I might not be able to pitch in five bucks to your GoFundMe or whatever it is that you're doing. But by me hitting that share button and letting my community know that there's something else going on, that's support. You know what I'm saying? That's supporting artists, supporting the community, supporting those around you. And just... I think it's sort of going back to Tupac. I might not be the one, yeah. but then there might be somebody else that might be connected with me. Yeah. That I, might, I yeah. might influence, and they, they can be the person yeah. that does something. Yeah, like, who knows? Maybe I'll get some some followers that are, you know, comic book, you yeah. know, Comic-Con, you know, right. Comic-Con based, and they're, oh, well, hey, I want to be in Ruben's art show. You know, whatever it might be, like... All those things trickle down to where, you know, you see the growth. And to me, you know, even if I can't go to an event, I might be out of town or I can't support and I can't put money towards certain things. Like, I'm still going to tell other people to do it. You know, that's our own platforms. And just if you guys can hit share, Barn Burner, Heart of Loot, uh, Heart of Boxing, uh, <laughs> the Hall H Show, just all these cool things, cool different initiatives, just hit the share button. It's not that hard. And, you know, even just going to the page and hitting like, that's supporting. So, con- you know, continue to support the community. Cool. So, so Bar Burner, uh, Heart of Boxing is this coming Saturday, September, September 30th. 30th. Well, what are the times again? Uh, 6.30 to midnight. Okay. Um, I think the first bell rings at 7.30. Um, and so we're, we're just going to start strong. We're going to start off with um, with the fight. We'll do some announcements. Um, the, we'll do the national anthem, all that stuff. Um you know, come out, do a little some a little music segment, and mm-hmm. then I think we're gonna have every hour we're gonna do a, a fight. Okay. So um, and uh, the lo- lot of fun. love that neighbor uh, toy drive is December December eighth and ninth, the Sweetwater Harley. Okay. And um, the Harley Davidson, you know, uh, dealership in National City, um, Ray Mysterio, and then Andy Vargas concert. Um, anybody, even if you're into comics and you're you know 
you're not into wrestling, I think uh, Rey Mysterio, I think he's got like some comic stuff that he's been working on or that he's doing. But I, I bet you even, I bet you he has a Funko. Uh, uh, probably, I think figure. I've seen Most him likely, before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that dude's involved in so much yeah. stuff. Like, you know, just even just to go out and support the stuff he's doing, you know, he's a, uh, He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in the entertainment industry ever. You know, he's he's a big sweetheart, and I'm sure you remember him from school. But he's just this guy. He's just he's an awesome dude. You know, so just support what he's doing. But it's free. Just bring a toy. Come, you know, meet and greet Ray Mysterio. Come uh, meet uh, the lead singer of you know Santana, and just come and hang out. And then uh, if anybody wants to go into TJ, and actually see firsthand the neighborhoods that we go into to hand out toys. Or if you want to go visit the the orphanage um, or some of the shelters, we're going to be going down there December 8th. Um, so reach out, like send me a message if you want to roll down so that way you could see firsthand some of the stuff. Um, any like writers or, you know, magazines or anybody who wants to come out. You know, uh, last year we had a magazine that came out and did, you know, photos for that. Um, but just reach out. Come come see it for yourself. You get you get to see the 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 fruits of of your labor too. You get to see like all the, the toys that were donated and you get to see them, you know, put smiles on some kids' faces, you cool. know, right then and there the very next day. Looking forward to so, it. So yeah, come oh, through. And where, where can people find you online? Um, connected with RT on, uh, on Instagram, connected with RT on Twitter, um, connect with Ruben Torres on Facebook. Um, and uh, I don't, I don't do Snapchat, but <sighs> maybe I should, but yeah. I, it's it's already too many. Like I'm just, uh, <laughs> I heard there was another one. I think it's called like my house or my neighborhood or another one. I was like, dude, another one. I was like, what are we gonna do? But they're bringing my space um, back. No, I'm joking. Yeah, they should. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can find me on those. Um, you know, I'm not as active on Twitter as I should be, but uh, you know, check out the the Instagram and um, it's uh, the heart of boxing. Um, also as well for for the this event and then. Uh, LTN movement on, uh, on Instagram and LTN movement on Twitter as well. So, and connect to Ruben and, uh, and love thy neighbor movement.com. I know it's a lot of stuff, but we'll, we'll, we'll list it on the show notes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could see all the different initiatives, all the little programs that we do on love thy neighbor movement.com. Uh, we encourage, you know, any, any partnerships, any partners that want to get involved, you can do a, you know, whatever it is, $5 a month, $10 a month, $20 a month. Um, you know, if you think about $20 a month, that's like one Starbucks a week that you're sacrificing to help help us continue doing what we're doing, you know, and impacting the community. So right. anybody who wants to come in and, and help out and partner up with us, you know, $20 a month is a huge help. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for being on the show. No, thank and, you for having and, me, man. It's an you, honor. Thank you for all you do. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll have you on again. Thank you. And hopefully uh, you can get me some passes to (laughs) (laughs) Comic-Con. Me and my son will roll out there and hang out. Uh, Cool. Um, On behalf of my co-host, Alex Benedicto, this is Aaron Abuse. Peace, cheers, and artists assemble. Boom. Thank you for listening to the Hall H Show. Our mission is to put the mainstream Hall H spotlight on artists, writers, and other creatives. We especially love emerging talent and people we think deserve more exposure, like Ruben Torres, the creator of the Love the Neighbor movement and art shows such as Barn Burner, The Heart of Boxing. If you are in San Diego, California on Saturday, September 30th, please come check it out at House of Boxing and be ready to be transported back to the 1940s. For ticket info, please go to houseofboxingsd.com. As Artist Alley Evangelist, we encourage you to please visit Artist Alley at all the conventions you plan on going to this year. Speaking of conventions, please make sure you are continuing to be SDCC fit so you can be better prepared for all the cons you plan on going to this year. Join in on the fun by following the SDCC fit movement online on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram using the hashtag SDCC fit. If you are listening to us on Google Play, iTunes, or Stitcher, we would appreciate a rating and a comment. We are always looking for interesting guests to have on the show, so if you have any suggestions, please reach out to us on social media using the hashtag HallHShow. Peace, cheers, and artists, assemble. Assemble.